Uh, my name is Sumu Nakajima from Railway Technical Research Institute, Japan. The title of my presentation today is Design, Construction, and Material Regulation of 3RGRS uh, Structures. Before talking about the main uh, issues, let me introduce myself and our research institute just briefly. Uh, this is my career. Uh, after I got PhD degree in, from University of Tokyo, I worked for some research institute. From 2011, I, I am working for Railway Technical Research Institute, RTRI. The RTRI was established when 90, at 1987 when Japanese Japan National Railway was divided and privatized. Japan National Railway was divided into seven railway companies and two organizations. And our research institute, RTRI, was established to succeed the research function of uh, Japan National Railway. Because dividing the uh, research function into seven railway companies will result in the shrinkage of the research uh, resources. The main work of our research institute is uh, uh, publishing some design standards for railway structures, including some technical uh, guidelines and practical manual and so on, and supporting uh, railway companies providing technical solutions and assisting disaster retrofitting and relevant uh, technical, giving some relevant technical uh, judgment. This is a schematic view of work of our research institute. Since our research institute is, uh, uh, since our institute is a research institute, of course we do the research. The development of 3RGRS retaining wall to the 3RGRS integral bridges is one of the most uh, successful uh, outcomes of our research work. And sometimes we do uh, consulting works. In this example, we propose the application of 3RGRS retaining wall for the uh, disaster retrofitting of the uh, damaged embankment. In this case, we can successfully construct uh, the uh, higher uh, st uh, structure with higher uh, stability with a shorter uh, period. Based on the uh, knowledge obtained from the, the research work and consulting work, we publish some uh, design uh, guidelines and the design uh, standard. This is the work of our uh, research institute. So now I move on to the main issue of my talk today. First, I will talk about the design standard of Japanese railway uh, structures by focusing on the three RGRS structures. <coughs> uh, three RGRS retaining wall, uh, the, uh, a schematic view of the three RGRS retaining wall is shown here. As Professor Tatsuoka presented, the uh, structure had many advantages. One is the high stability uh, thanks to the installation of the reinforcement. And the second one is the thin wall facing and uh, no wide footing required. A foot, a wide footing is not required. And thanks to this advantage, low land acquisition cost is also uh, possible. And uh, uh, since this uh, railway can be placed just behind the wall facing, since the, uh, the GRS uh, soil retaining wall are uh, composite structure uh, consisting of continuous rigid wall facing with a strong intact between a strong intact with the reinforcement and well compacted backfill and well uh, arranged uh, reinforcement. Since this is a composite structure, the uh, structure is free from the local instability, which may be sometimes problematic in the case of uh, segmental type reinforced soil retaining structures. And wall at more important, uh, uh, 
more importantly, wall facing is free from the settlement due to the embankment construction, uh, thanks to the uh, staged uh, construction method as uh, presented by Professor Tatsuoka. This is showing the, regi the resistant mechanism against the external load as a comparison of conventional type retaining wall and GRS uh, retaining wall. In the case of conventional type retaining wall, to increase their stability, the increase of self weight or widening footing will be the solution. But you may notice these solution will be result will result in a large cost increase. But in the case of the GRS uh, retaining wall, the main source of the uh, resistance is achieved by the friction between the uh, reinforcement and the backfill soil. So arrangement of the reinforcement uh, can be the uh, solution. This is a different resistant mechanism to increase the, uh, and this is a different resistant mechanism in terms of the stability. And as for the failure or fracture of the wall facing, in the case of the conventional type retaining wall, increase of the wall facing and the increase of the amount of the steel reinforcement will be the uh, solution. Because the wall facing of the conventional type retaining wall is modeled as a cantilever type retaining wall. And it should be noted that this solution will be a very a, a require large cost increase because the wall height becomes two times. The shear force acting at the bottom of the footing, bottom of the uh, wall facing, will become four times. And the, as for the uh, bending moment, will be eight times larger than uh, eight times larger. But in the case of the uh, GRS wall, since the wall facing of the GRS wall behaved as an elastic beam, with uh, much uh, support, so arrangement of the reinforcement can be the uh, solution. Uh, these are different. Th this kind of different resistant mechanism can be achieved uh, by the uh, can be achieved uh, because GRS retaining walls is a composite structure consisting of continuous rigid wall facing with strong intact with reinforcement and well compacted backfill soil and well arranged reinforcement. These are important issues to consider the uh, resistant mechanism of GRS, uh, 3R GRS retaining wall. The design and construction of 3R GRS retaining wall are described in design standard for railway uh, structures. The volume of earth structure regulated the applicable embankment material and degree uh, compaction management. And uh, the volume of earth retaining structure describes about the modeling and the required performance and so on. And uh, the volume of seismic design determines the seismic uh, load considered in the design. And three are uh, material manual regulated the characteristic the design characteristics of the reinforcement and the procedure to evaluate some kind of reduction factors. Uh, from now on, I will uh, briefly talk about the design standard for uh, retaining structure. Uh, the design standard for retaining structure cover the both retaining wall and bridge abutment, and it should be noted, it emphasized that uh, both conventional type retaining wall and abutment and uh, the enforced soil uh, structure, the enforced soil retaining wall and bridge abutment are covered in the same uh, design standard and as a performance based design concept. So it means that all these structures are uh, evaluated based on the performance. The performance can be verified with an uh, equivalent index. So all these structures are evaluated by an equivalent index. This is the point. 
So this is showing the required performance of Japanese railway structures. So first one is the safety. The safety is the performance to ensure that the earth uh, retaining structure does not threaten the life of users or people. And uh, safety includes the structure and the functional safety of the structures. And the second uh, required performance is a serviceability. Uh, serviceability is a performance to ensure comfortable use of the, uh, of the structure by users and the people. Uh, and the last one is a restorability, is a performance for maintaining the function of the earth uh, structures, of the structures in a usable state or holding in a restorable state, even after very large uh, actions like very large earthquake or very uh, heavy uh, rainfall. In Japan, both, uh, all the railway structures, including viaduct, bridge, earth structure, retaining structure, and tunnel, are are in the uh, performance-based design concept. So we can evaluate all the uh, structure with an equivalent index. But you may notice that even if the required uh, performance is uh, conceptually, uh, the conceptually same, but the uh, standard or the level of the requirement may be different depending on the type or importance of the structures. To express the uh, standard, required standard or level of the uh, performance, we uh, introduce a technical term. We, we introduce a, a performance rank. Uh, in Japanese railway structures, there are three types of performance uh, uh, rank, three ranks. First one is the uh, highest performance rank one is usually adapted to the wall, retaining walls, supporting high a speed train. This, uh, the, the structure with performance rank uh, should uh, show no or negligible deformation against action in the normal use. But in the case of the moderate action, which is highly expected for uh, design life, limited, some limited uh, deformation which can manage normal maintenance work is uh, possible. But in the case of the uh, extreme action, like very large earthquake or very heavy rainfall, small deformation are allowed, but uh, it, the, its extent should be limited to allow rapid restorations possible. But in the case of performance two, uh, performance rank two, uh, this is usually adapted to the world supporting train in urban area. Uh, should show the limited deformation managing temporal maintenance work against the action in the normal use. Some deformation is allowed, but it can manage in the uh, it can manage by the temporal reinforcement work. But in the case of uh, moderately action, intermediate level of action. No deformation or no a small deformation or a very small deformation allowing restart of service supply after minor, just minor retrofitting work. This level of deformation is allowed. But in the case of extremely large actions, uh, the failure should not be uh, occurred. As you may uh, understood from the uh, table, Required performance is uh, same among all structures, but depending on the type or importance of the structure, the uh, standard or level of the requirement is different. This is expressed uh, by the uh, performance rank. In the actual design calculation, the structure is judged whether the target structure has uh, satisfied the required performance with uh, sufficient standard or not. As you may notice, the uh, required performance, the expression of the performance is very, how can I say, abstract. 
So we need to connect the required performance and physical phenomena to do so. We set some performance item. Performance item express the required performance as a physical phenomenon. And the performance item is set depending on the part of the structure or the type of the structure. I will explain one by one. Uh, this is showing the performance item of the retaining wall. In the case of the uh, conventional type retaining wall, fracture, of the, uh, fracture or damage of the wall facing or the uh, footing, the concrete uh, member, is set as a performance item. For example, shear failure of the uh, facing occurred. Once shear failure uh, of the wall facing occurred, the structure uh, safety is judged to be totally lost. At the same manner, the stability of the foundation and the deformation of the backfill in case of the level two earthquake, that is a rest, deformation of the backfill is a, a performance item for the uh, restorability are considered. So the, uh, the, and the deformation of the backfill soil is uh, generated by the uh, sliding and the rotation of the wall. At the same manner with the uh, conventional type retaining wall, the, there are several performance items that are set for 3RGRS retaining structures. The fracture or damage of the wall facing is the same, but the modeling is different as I have explained in the previous slide. In the case of the uh, conventional type retaining wall, wall facing is modeled as cantilever. But in the okay. case of the uh, 3RGRS retaining wall, the wall facing is modeled as a, a elastic beam with much support. And at the same manner, stability of the foundation is replaced by the uh, stability of the reinforced uh, backfill soil. And as I uh, emphasized, the uh, reinforcement is also important structure member. So fracture, damage, or pull out of the reinforcement is the, also the performance item for the uh, GRS, uh, 3 RGRS retaining wall. And uh, as for the deformation of the backfill, same due to the sliding rotation of the reinforced backfill is the same. But as the other types of uh, source inducing the uh, deformation of the backfill soil, uh, the shear deformation of the reinforcement backfill is also considered in the case of 3RGRS retaining wall. From now on, I will briefly explain the uh, design uh, calculation method to achieve, to, to achieve the performance uh, item. The first one is the external uh, stability analysis of, three, uh, of uh, retaining wall. In the uh, external stability analysis, Fellini's uh, circular slip analysis is conducted, while the effect of reinforcement is uh, considered to evaluate the resistant moment. But in the case of the uh, stability of reinforced backfill soil, the two-edge uh, stability analysis uh, considering two failure plane in a uh, reinforced zone and unreinforced zone is uh, considered. And uh, the stability analysis against the sliding mode and overturning mode is uh, conducted. And as for the evaluation of the response of the wall facing, the wall facing is assumed to be an elastic beam supported by March uh, spring which is assured uh, by the strong connection between wall facing and the reinforcement in backfill soil. So thanks to these effects, the wall facing thickness of the 3RGRS retaining wall is about 300 millimeter. Uh, so this uh, thickness is uh, very thinner than the uh, conventional type uh, retaining wall. And as I uh, emphasized, the Evaluation of the design characteristics of the reinforcement 
is also an、uh, important issue. In the design standard, there are several、uh, reduction factors are considered. First, we evaluate the standard tensile strength while the taking into account the vari va variability. And some additional、uh, reduction factor also considered.、Uh, and the material reduction fact fa factors, depending on type of the action, are also、uh, considered. There are five、uh, reduction factors. One,、uh, one is a reduction factor considering、uh, chemical、uh, reaction. And the second one is a reduction factor relating to the damage during the construction. And the third one is a reduction factor related to the creep. And the fourth one is the reduction factor for the momentary or high speed load. And the final one is a reduction factor related to the、uh, train load. These、uh, reduction factors are、uh, combined depending on the type of action, as uh, uh, shown in this table. In the, for example, in the case of permanent action, alpha 1 reduction factors for considering alkaline resistance, and alpha 2 construction damage, and alpha 3、uh, creep load reduction factor are considered. But in the case of seismic load, The、uh, reduction factor for the creep is not considered, but the reduction factors for momentary load is、uh, considered.、Uh, let me summarize uh, uh, my talk up to now.、Uh, railway structures adapt a performance based design system, and the structural evaluation is possible with the same index uh, that is a、uh, required performance as a bridge. Uh, viaduct and tunnels. All the railway structure can be evaluated with the same index. And based on structure modeling,、uh, verification item in the design are set as a performance item. According to the characteristics, the type characteristics of the structure and the part of the structure. And the three RGRS structures have a performance rank. That indicates the required、uh, level of the required performance. And the analytical method for overall stability, stability of reinforced backfill soil, and the damage to、uh, reinforcement materials wall have been、uh, also、uh, developed. So, from now, I will、uh, briefly explain the cases about the case study to examine the analytical model. Uh, this is a, a shaking table model、uh, test of the conventional type retaining wall. As you can see, that due to the seismic loads, the wall、uh, shows sliding and rotational displacement. To evaluate this phenomena, in the case of a conventional type retaining wall, Newmark displacement analysis is adopted. In the Newmark displacement analysis, it is assumed that wall displacement increases when the action exceeds some、uh, threshold、uh, state. This threshold state is evaluated by the stability analysis. In the case of、uh, reinforced、uh, soil retaining wall, as you can see, that the sliding and rotation of the、uh, reinforced backfill occurred, and as well as this、uh, deformation mode, shear deformation of the backfill soil also generated. To consider shear deformation of the backfill soil, Uh, and、uh, sliding and overturning deformation of the reinforced back, backfill soil.、Uh, again, Newmax displacement, displacement method is adopted. To evaluate the、uh, threshold、uh, state, the、uh, stability analysis for sliding and overturning mode is、uh, conducted. Uh, this method is the validity of the, this method is ex examined using the、uh, case study of the,、uh, during the Hyogoken、uh, earthquake. 
the target retaining wall located here within the area of seismic intensity of 7. As Professor Tatsuoka presented, he, there are many uh, conventional, there are many examples of uh, conventional type uh, retaining wall failure. But in the case of uh, 3RGRs retaining walls, just minor uh, displacement uh, were observed and uh, minor retrofitting work uh, uh, is enough to the uh, start of the service supply. And this retaining wall has been uh, continuously used since uh, 1995. First, we did the modeling and based on the ground survey, uh, physical and uh, strength characteristics are set. And by conducting two edge stability analysis, we can evaluate the threshold state, threshold uh, yield uh, seismic coefficient for the sliding and overturning and the shear deformation mode. And by conducting NUMAC uh, displacement analysis, we obtain the residual displacement. In total, Three, uh, about 300 displacements were evaluated at that wall top. As you can see that the uh, actual displacement was about 270. That is uh, well, uh, the, the evaluated one corresponded well with the measured one. And it should be also emphasized that the deformation mode the sliding displace, uh, the amount of sliding displacement is about uh, one 100 millimeter, almost the same. And the difference between the bottom and the wall top displacement is, in this case, 210 millimeter. It is not so, uh, uh, it, 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 the amount is well corresponded with the uh, measured uh, ones. So the analytical model uh, described in the design standard is verified by based on the uh, study on the slightly uh, displaced 3RGR retaining wall and the amount of residual displacement and deformation mode agreed well with the uh, measured one. From now on, I will talk about the material regulation and the construction of uh, GR, 3RGR retaining wall. Uh, design and construction of 3RGRS retaining walls are regulated by design standards for railway structures of earth, volume of earth structure and volume of earth retaining structure. And the design characteristics and reduction factors are uh, described in uh, CRB method material manuals. As I have uh, explained many times, 3RGRS structure is a composite structure uh, consisting of continuous rigid wall facing and well compacted backfill soil and reinforcement. So from now on, I will talk about the material regulation and compaction management of the backfill soil. This is showing the physical and strength characteristics of the backfill soil considered in design. Uh, based on the Ashtor uh, classification, the soil type is divided into four uh, types. And uh, the type one, uh, the uh, values of strength characteristics of each type are shown here. But type one, it shows most highest uh, strengths. And uh, type two and type three is slightly smaller than the uh, type one. And in the case of uh, the uh, seismic action, very large seismic action, both peak and residual soil strengths is uh, strengths are considered. But uh, other than the level, uh, very large seismic action, the residual soil strengths is uh, considered in design. But it should be noted that these soil characteristics are set under the premise of uh, sufficient uh, compaction. This is showing is how the uh, soil character, uh, soil strengths are determined. This is showing the uh, distribution of the angle of internal friction at the peak strength rate, five peak for soil type one, 
average of uh, fifth, about 50 degrees, and the uh, variation is about uh, five degrees. Uh, so we first we classify the embankment material and uh, set the strengths that can be expected when a specified degree of compaction is achieved based on the uh, results of uh, triaxial uh, compression test, while the effect of the variation is uh, considered. In this, dis uh, this distribution is obtained from the uh, test result at the degree of compaction of uh, 90%. And, and I have explained in the previous slide, a GDR strength is used during the normal condition, and both peak and residual soil strengths are used in seismic, uh, a very large seismic uh, condition. And as for the uh, compaction management, this is regulated by the uh, design standard of earth structure, volume of earth structure, uh, mat both material regulation and compaction management are uh, considered. First, uh, we divided into the uh, soil into one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight uh, group based on the ash to soil classification. And generally speaking, A group soil is the uh, uh, gravel or well graded uh, sand with less fine content. And B group soil is the uh, uh, gravel and uh, well graded uh, sand with uh, some amount of uh, fine content. And the C group soil is the uh, uh, gravel and the soil with uh, uh, high uh, fine content and uh, the fine content consisting of organic soil or volcanic ash soil. And some uh, fine materials are classified into C uh, group. Based on this group code oh, sorry. Depending on the uh, performance rank of the structure, and the part of the embankment, the applicable materials are regulated as shown in this table. For example, in the case of performance rank one, only A group and the stabilized or improved B group soil is uh, possible for the uh, construction of uh, performance rank one structures. But in the case of performance rank two, A and uh, an reinforced and improved uh, B group soil uh, can be used for the construction. So this, as you can see that the, depending on the performance rank and the part of the structure, the applicable embankment materials are different and regulated. And as for the compaction uh, management, Again, depending on the performance rank and the part of the embankment, degree of the uh, com uh, no, 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 uh, management index and the uh, uh, standard are different. For example, in the performance rank one, for the upper part of the embankment, both degree of the compaction and the value of K30, that is the stiffness index, are uh, regulated. In the case of degree of compaction, the average should be larger than 95% and the minimum value is, should be larger than 92%. But in the case of performance rank two, the uh, regulation, uh, the degree of compact, regulated degree of compaction is slightly uh, smaller than the performance rank one. That is the same with the stiffness index. In the case of performance rank one, average 110, uh, average 110, but the minimum is 70. But in the case of performance rank two, the minimum is 50 to 70, depending on the type of the soil. So this degree of compaction and the value of uh, K30 are evaluated based on the sand replacement or R RI method, RI instrument. And as for the uh, stiffness index, plate loading test or falling weight defractometer test is uh, conducted. But in the case of lower part of the embankment, uh, lower part of the embankment is not so. Uh, it, it, for the lower part of the embankment, stiffness, there is no uh, stiffness uh, control. The degree of compaction management is uh, uh, done. 
was about as the compaction management. So next, I will talk about the uh, regulation of uh, so, uh, reinforcement material. As I have explained, uh, first, the value of Tk is important. This is evaluated by the uh, single uh, strip uh, tensile uh, uh, test, uh, you, you, uh, ten tensile test using single strip. And the number of the specimens, 20, we will have this kind of distribution. And to consider the effect of variation, the, we we obtain the uh, value of Tk uh, by uh, this uh, equation. Based on this, t the value of Tk, some uh, safety margin is considered depending on the uh, type of action. Generally, a 20% reduction is considered, except for the uh, large uh, uh, se seismic design with considering very large seismic load. From this value Ta, the uh, additional reduction factors are considered depending on the type of the action. And depending on the type of action, the uh, reduction factors are considered, but these reduction factors are evaluated based on the uh, regulated uh, experiment. There are five reduction factors, as I have explained. The first one is a reduction factor considering uh, alkaline resistance. Because reinforcement are placed in high alkali uh, circumstances. Uh, this reduction factor alpha 1 is evaluated as a ratio Tk after submerged into the alkaline uh, solution to the uh, Tk without any uh, deteriorations. The uh, detail procedure or the concept is uh, shown here. Uh, then the case of uh, reduction factor two, uh, that is a related reduction factor related to the uh, damage during the construction, uh, because the reinforcement is damaged due to the construction compaction. The reinforcement is, sub, as I mentioned, is subjected to the load in the construction uh, process. So in evaluating the reduction factor alpha 2, uh, actual construction process is uh, to achieve a sufficient compaction degree is uh, simulated by this procedure. First, compacted gravel is constructed and the reinforcement are placed on the compacted gravel. And again, gravel is uh, to uh, placed and sufficient compaction applied. Reduction factor A2, alpha 2 is evaluated the ratio to the ratio of the Tk to the uh, Tk after compaction to the Tk without compaction. But if we have the rupture, if we observe the rupture from the uh, extracted uh, reinforcement, additional uh, reduction is also uh, considered. But in the case of alpha-3, uh, the alpha-3 is evaluated uh, by the creep loading test. Uh, in the creep loading test, uh, creep loading level TL is investigated. In the creep loading test, as schematically illustrated here, the dead weight are uh, applied uh, to the uh, three uh, specimen. And TL is determined as the ten maximum tensile force in which the strain increment in the specified duration satisfies the limitations. The creep reduction factor A3 is determined as the ratio of TL to TK. The next one is the reduction alpha 4 reduction factor for the momentary high speed load. Since the reinforcement are subjected to the uh, momentary or high speed load in seismic condition. Uh, this is showing the time history to achieve the uh, reduction uh, time history of the load in the test to achieve reduction factor alpha 4. First, 24 hours uh, sustained loading at the loading level of 0 0.3 as compared to the uh, TK. 
and uh, some um, high speed loading is three cycles of the high speed loading is applied and uh, t this t level t e is uh, determined to to achieve the reduction factor alpha 4 and t e is a uh, 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 maximum uh, load level which three specimens do not exhibit failure nor exceed 50% uh, tensile uh, strain. The final one is the reduction factor related to the uh, train load. Uh, to achieve reduction factor A5, the, uh, some model test is conducted by placing the geogrid beneath the uh, footing with overburden. Uh, depth of about uh, uh, no, not about 30, just 30 centimeter, and applying uh, some uh, cyclic load with 100 uh, 1.5 million uh, cycles. After application of this cyclic load, TK is evaluated from the uh, uh, specimen, and the reduction factor A5 A5 is expressed as the ratio of TK after cyclic load to TK without cyclic load. As I have briefly explained, uh, the railway design and standard for earth retaining structures, earth structures and material manuals for three RGRS structures regulate the applicable materials and the embankment compaction uh, management for three RGRS structures. Uh, the based on triaxial compression test result, design soil strengths are set depending on the soil type, while the effect of sufficient compaction is uh, uh, considered. So, in other words, uh, uh, good compaction is the uh, uh, premise of the use of uh, the soil strengths shown in the design standard. And applicable embankment materials, compaction management value are regulated uh, depending on the performance rank and the part of the structure. As for the reinforcement material, reinforcement materials applicable to the use of 3RGRS structures are, are regulated by material manuals. And the standard, from the standard uh, tensile strength, TK, there are many uh, reduction uh, factors, alpha 1 to alpha 4, uh, no, no, I should say alpha 5, uh, is experimentally uh, evaluated, and these reduction factors are considered, as well as uh, uh, some additional safety margin. And the test procedure to obtain reduction factors are briefly introduced. Uh, for the detail, please refer to the uh, material manual for 3RGRS structures. So next, I will talk about the recent application for disaster uh, retrofitting work. This is the first case uh, coming from the north part of Japan, Hokkaido, or 2016. Uh, Three typhoon attacked uh, continuously at this time. So as this is showing the general view of the uh, damaged uh, site, as you can see that the uh, segmental type, bottom part of the segmental type retaining wall are uh, uh, lost due to strong uh, water flow and the strong water flow penetrated into the backfill soils and again the backfill soil were uh, flowed out and uh, the top part of the embankment also oh, oh, flowed out and more serious uh, damage is shown in the uh, 1a uh, side this is showing the uh, front view of the uh, 1A side. As you can see that uh, the retaining wall protecting the bridge abutment are totally lost. And uh, the embank top part of the embankment also uh, lost. And this type of, uh, this failure leads to the uh, rail level, as you can see here. So uh, the three RGRS retaining walls are used to reconstruct the uh, protection uh, 
retaining wall of the, uh, of the abutment. The, this is a schematic view of the reconstruct, uh, schematic view of the one A side uh, reconstruction. Uh, as you can see that eight point five meter uh, retaining wall are constructed beneath the uh, 11 meter uh, reinforced embankment. The basic reinforcement length is about three meter and every 1.5 meter, the reinforcement is extended uh, to uh, the uh, active failure angle. And the design tensile strengths are shown here. Uh, this is the uh, uh, process of construction, firstly, removing the uh, unstable soil and uh, uh, placing the uh, reinforcement and uh, filling the uh, backfill soil using long um, backhoe and compaction and uh, with a uh, uh, target degree of compaction of 90% and K30 is uh, 70. And after the, con and, and the uh, to reinforcement work and uh, installation of the steel bar reinforcement and after fully construction of the top part of the embankment, cast in place uh, concrete constructed. It should be emphasized that if we construct the wall facing before the completion of the embankment, the wall facing cannot escape from the effect of the increase of uh, such load, so wall may be uh, cracked. So the stages of construction uh, is also important in the case of uh, disaster retrofitting work. Uh, this is the overview of the uh, reconstructed, uh, after the completion of the reconstruction work. Second case is from the south part of uh, Japan, uh, Kyushu. As you can see that this part of the embankment uh, was uh, lost. Uh, as schematically illustrated here, here. edge of the failure uh, part uh, exceed the edge of the uh, sleeper, so we need to reconstruct the, uh, the, uh, the failed embankment. And this is a plan view of the damaged site. As you can see that there are many uh, fields, so in the case of the rain, heavy rainfall, rainfall concentrated uh, to the uh, damaged uh, site. And uh, the erosion due to the water flow, surface erosion due to the water flow is uh, considered to be the main reason for the uh, failure. So the uh, height is relatively high and there was a land uh, restriction as I will explain later. So the uh, three application of the 3RG RS wall is uh, uh, proposed, and but due to the uh, coordination with the relevant local government and requests from the resident along the line, the allowable construction uh, term to the start of the operation is just 1.5 months. So due to this restriction, the normal uh, construction process does not satisfy the above this uh, requirement. So specification for a temporary 3RGRS wall is adapted in this case for uh, the restart of uh, service supply before the completion of RC wall uh, facing. I will explain from now on. This is a schematic view of the uh, reconstruction uh, work. As you may notice that the uh, inclination of the wall facing is uh, enlarged up to uh, 20%. Although the uh, case of the normal 3RGRS wall is just 0.033%. So the, by in, increase the uh, inclination, the wall, we, uh, the, uh, the stability bef is, uh, sta we, we want to increase the uh, stability. Now, uh, and uh, uh, all the enforcement is extended to the existing embankment. 
as you can see here, although ordinary case of 3R GRS retaining walls, such extension is done by every 1.5 meter uh, vertical spacing. In this case, uh, every 30 centimeter, the reinforcement is extended to the edge of the existing embankment. And as for the embankment material to enhance the drainage, a crushed stone or A group material is used as an embankment uh, material. Uh, this is showing the construction process up to the uh, reopening of service supply. Uh, first, uh, beginning of the uh, construction of the uh, retaining wall part, bottom retaining wall part, and after that, uh, we start the uh, 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 construction of the top part of the embankment. And finally, we uh, restore the uh, railroad. And at this moment, we can restart uh, service supply, and wall facing and slope protection work is conducted after the opening of service supply as uh, uh, who, who the, the process is shown here. And this is a final example, uh, is coming from the central part of uh, Japan. This is a case of embankment uh, damaged by outflow. As you can see that uh, this embankment is uh, eroded uh, due to the overflow uh, it is, uh, 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 I should say, uh, to overf uh, 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 overflow. Uh, this is induced by the uh, debris, flow, debris flow coming from two kilometers far uh, from the uh, damaged uh, site. And uh, the soil deposited uh, about 20,000 cubic meter and the the length is about 150 meters. And it should be emphasized that this part is remained. And this part is a, a, a reconstructed part uh, after the previous uh, this same kind of disasters. And this part, the uh, concrete uh, slope protection work is uh, conducted with sufficient uh, connection between the uh, installed uh, reinforcement. This is the reason why this part is uh, survived. And this part, uh, some drainage pipe are installed to, how can I say, reduce this kind of debris flow. But this uh, 1.5 diameters uh, 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 drainage facility is totally clogged uh, by the uh, rock uh, carried by the uh, debris flow. So now on, from now on, I, uh, no, I, from now on, I will show you how the uh, connection between the wall facing and the reinforcement is effective to resist against the uplift force uh, generated at, at the overflowing. This is a kind of model test. The overflow come from left hand side. This is a case for the uh, embankment without any slope protection work, but the embankment is, itself is highly uh, compacted. Even if the uh, backfill uh, embankment material is highly compacted, the uh, embankment is eroded due to the uh, overflow. This is a case for the uh, same embankment material, but the uh, slope protection work with a strong uh, connection between the reinforcement are uh, uh, achieved. As you can see that some erosion at the bottom part of the embankment is observed, but uh, the uh, slope protection work uh, resists effectively against the uh, erosion due to the overflow. So based on these knowledges, we decided the uh, specification of the embankment, drainage pipe were enlarged, and uh, the arrangement of the reinforcement is set by following the specification performance rank one, although the performance rank of the embankment is two to three. 
and as for the specification of the slope protection work, just in place concrete facing is adapted uh, to protect the embankment from the erosion. And the reinforcement is anchored to the uh, concrete uh, slope protection work uh, to resist the uplift force induced by the outflow. Uh, this is a schematic view of the reconstructed embankment. As you can see that the uh, uh, slope protection work uh, placed and the uh, uh, reinforcement with every uh, vertical spacing of 1.5 meter are uh, connected tightly to the uh, slope uh, protection uh, work. And drainage pipe were enlarged uh, to, uh, for, for sufficient uh, drainage. Uh, this is a photo uh, during the construction and uh, after the completion of the slope uh, protection work. Uh, this is the summary in this uh, section. In Japan, many soil structures have been damaged by recent heavy rain disaster, and the 3RGR structures have been adapted for the restoration. And this adoption of the 3RGRS structures make it possible to stabilize the damaged structures against heavy rain and earthquake without the need for or structural changes to bridge, etc. And by utilizing the staged construction method, it is possible to resume training operations before construction is completed. And strong connection between the enforcement and the concrete facing is effective to resist against the uh, overflow. Now, let me summarize my talk. Uh, so this is a summary. Railway structure adapter performance-based design uh, system. So uh, the same index can be used to evaluate the uh, structure. And the structure modeling and the verification item in design are set according to the characteristics of the structure. And 3RGRS structure have a, a performance rank that indicates the required level of the uh, required performance. And the analytical method for overall stability is stability of reinforced backfill and damage to reinforcement materials and walls have been developed and it uh, verified. And railway design standard from earth retaining structure, earth structures, material, manuals for 3RGRS structure regulates the applicable uh, materials and the embankment, the extent of the embankment uh, compaction. And the, the uh, design soil strength is uh, determined based on the triaxial uh, compression uh, test, but it should be emphasized that the effect of sufficient compaction is uh, considered, uh, is uh, effect of the good compaction is very important to use such design soil strengths. And applicable embankment materials and compaction management value are regulated depending on the performance rank and the part of the uh, structures. And reinforcement materials are the characteristics, design characteristics of the reinforcement materials are regulated by a material, a manual. There are many reduction factors, but the uh, uh, test procedure to obtain such kind of reduction factors are briefly today introduced. But for the detail, please refer to the uh, design manual or 3RGRC structures. And the last one is the same. Uh, uh, I, I will skip the last uh, uh, summary. And now we are behind the uh, schedule. I will skip to introduce the appendix to in uh, to introduce applied project outside of Japan, please refer. And if you have any question, please. Thank you for your kind attention.